Greetings, traveler. I am Sir Knox, the teller of tales. Would you like to hear one? Before we get started, please consider subscribing to the channel, as, believe it or not, that helps the channel grow immensely with the videos getting out there much further into the abyss of YouTube. Anyways, <laughs> let's continue. This one is called, My Character Wouldn't Join a Party. Oh no, what happened? Hello, first time poster here. I found this sub a little over a week ago and have finally worked up the courage to share one of my stories. Not sure if this one 100% counts because technically the player never made past his session zero. Well, I'm sure it's good enough to be here, so let's continue. Obligatory mobile apologies. Disclaimer. This one is much milder than a lot of what gets posted here. I've been DMing for the better part of 10 years now, and in that time I have settled on two firm rules when it comes to my players and character creation. 1. Their character conceptually has to make sense in the world that we're playing in, and 2. The character has to have a reason to join an adventuring party. And in all my time as a DM, I've only had to veto one character before this incident. So on to the story. I've been running this campaign for about six months now and things were going great. Unfortunately, due to scheduling issues, things started to not go great. One player had to drop out due to getting put on the night shift at his job, and another has some family issues going on and misses sessions semi-frequently. The usual stuff that derails campaigns in adult life. About this time, a new guy starts at my job. One day, he sees me unbutton my work shirt and sees the D&D shirt I'm wearing underneath, and we start talking about D&D. I figure I'll take a chance and invite him to play since we're down a few players. He accepts. I send him a few of the Google Docs I have with campaign setting stuff on them. I run a homebrew campaign and let him know he can read through them if he wishes, or when we sit down to create his character, I can point him directly to what information is relevant to his character. To my pleasant surprise, he reads everything, and even asks me multiple questions over the next few days. We finally sat down one night to hammer out the finer details of his character over Discord, and he has most of it worked out already. He wanted to play a variant human fighter, Eldric Knight subclass. The idea is that he was born with magical birthmark that has made him an outcast. Big deal in my world, as there's a huge bias against magic, and he left his home to find answers about his mark and to try to learn how to control his powers. So far, so good. There's only a few small things to work out to really make this character meld into the world. And finally, I get to the big question. What would be your character's motivation for joining the party, and why would he want to stay with them? A few seconds of silence go by and he answers. Hmm, my character wouldn't join a party. I hesitate for a second before asking him what he means. Well, my character's just used to being a loner and he doesn't trust people. He'd be very unlikely to join a group, and even more unlikely to stay with them for an extended period of time. I tried to suggest a few ideas that would get his character on board with joining a party, from needing money to needing more manpower to get answers he needs, to being tired of being alone, but he just vetoed everything I suggested. Finally, after what seemed like forever, it was probably only like 10 minutes, but still, I finally gave up trying and said, well, it sounds like this character isn't going to work in this campaign. You can either give him a reason to join the party, or you can create a new character. He responds, so you're just going to railroad me into doing what you want? If that's the case, I'd rather not play. Well, I guess that's your decision. <laughs> he left the Discord server shortly after and has avoided me at work since. We've since filled the empty spot with one of my player's wives, and she's doing an amazing job. A few things to add. One, for the sake of keeping this post as brief as possible, I didn't really go into detail as to what I meant by the character has to have a reason to join an adventuring party. Honestly, the answer to this question can be as simple or as complex as a player wants, as long as they're willing to work as a part of a team. I've had players with simple motivations like, We've been through some crap together, and now we're friends. And I've had players with reasons intricately laced into multiple page backstories. It doesn't matter what the reason is as long as it gets the character to stick. This guy refused to come up with a reason why his character would work with the party under any circumstance. 2. I actually really like edgy backstories. As long as the player can keep the character motivated to stay in the party, 
they can work quite well. It's unfortunate he couldn't because the character he pitched me sounded awesome. Number three. Guys named Kyle have left a negative impression on some of y'all. Just kind of funny to see. <laughs> just, yes, Kyle is the, the, the name of... Oh no, <laughs> Kyle in itself is a red flag. <laughs> Not really, I'm sorry. If you're named Kyle, it's a joke. Um, I mean, I think that's reasonable. If you're creating a campaign and they don't want to participate with the party, then it's just... What's the point, right? Like, just the two of you play together, or you have to create an entire side story where they just play with themselves while the rest of the table sits around. It's it's kind of lame. I mean, there might be a an opportunity for side plots to pick up in campaigns that are quick or brief, or but not the entirety of the game, where you're basically playing two separate games in the same world. I don't know. I mean, it might work, honestly. It might be fun to watch, you know, if, if there was somebody streaming it or something. But participating just for fun, I don't know. I feel like if I was just another player at the table, I would... I don't know if I'd enjoy that. But the more I think about it, maybe it wouldn't be too bad. But no, I, I understand, though. I understand why you would want to do that, and it makes sense. I don't think there's anything wrong with your decision to do so. But it's awkward that you work together. If it was just some random Discord, then a meetup or something like that, then it, I guess it wouldn't be as weird. But the fact that you work together, just... Man, that's that's brutal. Hopefully, it, well, sounds like you're not talking anymore. That's just weird. <laughs> that's awkward. Hopefully that doesn't get weird at work or someone quits as a result. Just, you know, carry on and keep it civil. It's just a game. Our next tale is called DM Favoritism. More like DM Infatuation. Not safe for work. Oh, okay, well, let's see what happened. New here and wanting to get this story out because it gives me nightmares to this day. Oh, it sounds juicy. All right, here we go. Now, I met the DM by pure chance, though looking back, the initial meeting itself should have been the biggest red flag to nope out that ever existed. I had posted that I was looking for someone to play Baldur's Gate 3 with in a Discord server. If one were to look at my profile tags in said Discord and in the post, I had said, ask to directly message me. He failed to do so and directly messaged me, which in hindsight should have been my first warning. You had asked to direct, directly message you and then they did? D was there a typo? Maybe you said you had hadn't asked it? I don't, I'm not sure. I'm a little confused right now. We played for a bit and role-played as our characters for some dorky fun. In passing, I had mentioned that this was as close to a D&D game as I was going to get since I had no game shop near me and was afraid to just randomly browse Roll20 and other sites since I was a fair bit shy when it came to meeting new people. Lo and behold, DM happened to be just starting a 5th edition homebrew and asked me to join, which was a resounding yes. Now, I thought DM was a good man at first. He presented to me, before we started all this, a consent form for his game. So here I am thinking, oh look, green flag, and I'm eager to make my character and start the game. I would think a consent form might actually mean that there's going to be a lot of debauchery going on, but you were excited, so... I make a druid character whose circle was wiped out by people in the DM's homebrew world. He latched to my character a bit, and looking back, it seems like he would have cooled me a lot more than the others in this campaign, and tried to main character my character, to which I sort of tried to stray from. Of course, me at the time never realized this, but seeing as how I was awkward in the spotlight, I tried to urge DM to give equal spotlight time to the other players. We started a new homebrew game with some people from my other friend group where I played a character that the DM approved of and had quite a bit of interweaving in the story. Again, he became infatuated with my character, which extended to me and his messages to me. Post-session became increasingly more insistent about his want of me, even describing how to the last detail and what he wanted to do to me in the bedroom. Oh, yikes. And how I was a tease to him. After the second shutdown, I had enough. I blocked him, let the other players see what was up, including my character sheets, which had tweaks to it I didn't realize to give me an edge over everyone else. This caused DM to lose the table entirely, as I was later informed this was not his first time making unwanted advances on someone. 
I thought I was done with it then and there, but for nearly a month afterward, he tried to follow me on my social media accounts, which I blocked him on, then wound up deleting and remaking different accounts to hide from him. Tried to get messages through mutual contacts to me, and so on. It eventually stopped. I still have nightmares that he's going to find me, and I swear he somehow found my number and tried messaging me one day out of the blue, which I promptly blocked. Nowadays, I run with the table that left him, and have never had a better bunch of people to play TTR RBGs with. Yes, the stalkery thing is quite frightening, honestly, and people like that are just... Either they don't care or they're just completely oblivious to how creepy that behavior is. Like, things should develop naturally, and if there's, you know, uh, if there is some chemistry there, then it'll just, it'll come out. I guess some people just don't know how to function properly and they make things weird and creepy and then when they don't get their way they just become psycho stalkers which is completely unacceptable and not okay and it just causes trauma like don't do that but i'm sorry you went through that i i understand how traumatizing that could be but hopefully the group is great and it just ends there and he doesn't you know he gets over it and hopefully he doesn't do that to other people but obviously people like that aren't going to change until Either they're traumatized or they're just, you know, do something that lands them in jail or something. Anyways. Well, that concludes our tales for today. If you'd like to hear more, come back and I shall tell you some. Thumb.